Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, thanks for stopping by and checking out my video today. Um, so this video is a follow-up to my um, delivery slash semi-setup of the Ricoma DTF Rebel uh, 2402. So I had ordered the printer back in um, February, February 27th. We didn't um, receive the product until sometime in May. So we went about three months waiting to receive it. And then um, once I had it unpackaged and all put together in my garage and ready to, to train and install on it, it then sat in my garage for another month uh, before the uh, company sent anybody out here to do anything about it. They had an initial service date. Um, that date came. I was out here waiting for someone to show up uh, to, you know, work on putting things together. And I literally get a call that morning from somebody at, um, Ricoma saying, Oh, no, they called They're sick. They're not going to be there. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I, you had to have been flying somebody out here. You know, they don't just, you know, all of a sudden they, they should have been out here the day before if they're flying out to do any kind of work. So the fact that I'm getting called the morning of literally at the time they're supposed to be in my shop that someone's sick and they're not going to make it was not good. I was not happy with that. Scheduled it for another two weeks out for the install. Uh, the installer came um, the whole time they did the install. They were on their phone uh, looking at a document that showed them how to set it up, uh, how to do things, you know, put her, their phone down, go back, do something, pick their phone back up, read some more, go back and do some more things. There were some things that they had already gotten them selves familiar with so they weren't going to their phone for those things but then when we started finally trying to print um we couldn't get it to print right so then it's phone calls to recoma uh, facetimes with other people over at recoma looking at the you know the print lines that come out the alignment lines you know nobody knowing why it's doing what it's doing um throwing their hands up in the air and saying it's a printhead i got a bad printhead so they sent, um, she came out the next day because we, we let the system sit in a cleaning solution in the hopes that that might clear the printhead and that was the problem. She came out the next day, was here for maybe an hour, ran a cleaning on both nozzles, did a nozzle check, looked at it and said, nope, it's no different. So we're going to just send you a printhead. So the second day she, they were here for an hour and then they left. Um, where I was supposed to get five hours each day of install and training. So um, she left. Um, they said that they were going to send me a printhead, which I did get the printhead. But I'm a tech guy. I mean, I own an IT company. So I dug into the printer and started pulling the printhead out to see if there was a problem with it, a clog. But the one thing I noticed was the printhead has three screws that hold it down. And the back left screw on the printhead for CMYK wasn't even in. I mean, it was just flopping around back there and eventually probably would have fallen out. So and then the printhead was real wobbly. And I'm just thinking, there's no way you're going to get decent prints with it being wobbly like this. And that was, I brought it to their attention and I was told that's something that they try to do to fix the problem. Well, I don't believe that. So I cleaned out the printhead anyways, put that back screw back in, snugged it all down, Ran a print nozzle check, beautiful. Exactly how it should have been with the nozzle that it came with, the printhead that it came with. You know, so their tech could have done something similar, but that wasn't the case. They tried to get her to flush the printheads, and she'd never done it before, so she was flushing it back into the capping station, and it was just a mess. So, um... After that was done, sorry for this long video, but I mean, I'm just going to let you be, on, be honest about everything. So if this is the direction you're going to go, I want you to be aware. Um, so then after we got the print at working, I had a print offset issue where when I would print a graphic, the white underbase print was offset by about an eighth of an inch um, from top to bottom on the vertical. And I went a couple of days, called into support, worked with a few people through FaceTime and Zoom. You know, they looked at things, they had me check settings, they went over my settings over and over and over and over again. You know, so um, 
And uh, ultimately, it still wasn't resolved. You know, another two weeks had passed since they were here to install. I'm another month out, not printing, not in production, not making anything for customers. All the while, I've already made two payments on all of this equipment. You know, so I was, I'm obviously very frustrated. So I, again, dig in. I need to become the expert on this printer. And I um, spent a lot of time, days upon days and weekends, digging in, testing settings, printing, wasting film and ink, just to, you know, print another test, make another change, print another test, make another change. And I did that for a very long time. Um until eventually I found the setting that I needed to tweak. And then when I made that change, prints were back on track. The offset was gone. You know, I was completely covering my color with white under base. And I was good to go. So, and then it was like days after that, I finally get an email from their service team asking if we could set up a time for me to talk to them like five days later, five days in the future, about what's going on, of what they may have, may or may not have learned from the manufacturer. So I was just like, you know what? I replied back to the email, and I was a little rude. I said, I'm not happy with Recoma. You know, your support is horrible. If you keep doing this with these installs and your support, you're not going to do well in this industry. You know, the only reason I did well is because I'm an IT guy, and I'm technical, and I understood this. If I wasn't, and your, your average Joe that goes out and spends this kind of money on these devices, you're going to be dead in the water unless they get a team together that can fully understand what needs to be done to properly install, manage, you know, maintenance and support these, these units. So that all being said, my system is currently in production, um, runs hundred percent. It's perfect. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the, the equipment, I know the equipment comes from uh, a China manufacturer. It's Tao, Tao Tech. The printer is a Titan. I think on their uh, Alibaba, you probably get this whole setup for about half of what I paid. You know, but um, uh, the equipment's great. Print's great. The film's great. Inks have been great. Powder's been great. Powder shaker's worked great. The oven's been working great. Um, we did have a problem with the air purifier that Ricoma sends you. So there's two fans in this purifier. There's a fan on the top and a fan on the bottom. There's two plugs that plug into this unit. Well, the top one is 110. Well, the bottom one's 220. And it's 220 with a 110 volt plug. So you're not gonna get any voltages to that, the 220 that you need to run that lower blower motor to pull those fumes and the exhaust out. So I literally had to modify that. Not modify that, I ran. 220 to it. So I have 220 running to the air purifier now. And now I believe they're sending out a, a different type of connector or cable to get it to work for you. But that was another problem with Recoma that it just it was mind boggling because the, the install tech called their office and said, hey, can you check the air purifier that we have in the shop and tell me if it's doing the same thing? And the guy goes over and looks at it and says, oh, no, the bottom blower is not on either. Well, yeah, because you're plugged into a 110-volt outlet when it's 220. So here you are pumping all these fumes and stuff into your office, you know, because your lack of understanding to get the right cable or power cord onto that air purifier to get it working right. You know, so. Um, anyway, everything's pretty well fine-tuned. You know, I leave that open. My humidity is really low right now. It's at 33% or 35. Um, I have a humidifier in the back corner. You can see that going right now. I try to get the humidity between 45 to 55 if I can. Uh, but I've been printing at, you know, 80 degrees, you know, 38%, 40% humidity, and it's been working really good. So, you know, whether or not it continues like that. Um, yeah, but needless to say, uh, I like the system. You know, it, it is running as I would hoped for, but I mean, it should have been running like this out of the box with an installer here within a few days of me receiving it, not a month after I get it. You know, a few days I get it, you send someone out, they set everything up, I'm printing, I'm in production. 
If they can do that, if they can turn it all around and get that as their SOP, then they're going to be doing fine. But if they keep doing what they're doing, and I had comments on my last YouTube video that uh, the gentleman said he bought the Revel, and they came out and literally the guy that came out there had no clue what he was doing, you know, and how to set up the software and, and so on and so forth. So to me, that's, that's unacceptable. So I was at a point with this unit. If we couldn't get it in production within another week or so, my attorney was going to be sending letters to Recoma. And all of this was going to go back. And I was going to be done with them. So luckily for them, I fixed the issues. And I'm going to keep moving forward with what I have. But um, anyway, that's my update video. I hope it's beneficial to somebody out there that's uh, trying to get a device like this to, to work on it. If you're having challenges, maybe you do have this and support's not great and you're having challenges, feel free to reach out to me. I don't mind helping people. You know, it's um, it's what we do. You know, I know you're trying to get into the business and, um, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. And if you're having problems, the worst thing you want in a startup right out of the gate is lack of support and lack of getting you into a production mode. So if that's you and you have this, this unit, um, feel free to uh, message me on any of our social media platforms um, and I'll do my best to help you. So I thank you for watching my video and please uh, check back for more in the future. I'm actually going to add a little bit uh, of content to this video of um, it actually printing, uh, going through the shaker and the oven and stuff like that so you can see it in, in motion. So thank you and we'll talk to you later. Okay, folks, fresh off the press, uh, custom made by us.com. You will find these gang sheets. Um, they are 22 by 60 gang sheets. Uh, we've got Thanksgiving, which is over here, Thanksgiving and fall, and Halloween, because you know both of those are coming up. They are $30 each. You will find them on our website. It's actually an online store as well. Um, CustomMadeByUs.com. All right, hope to find you all there. Have a great day.